guys, welcome to the DMX Show. I'm your host Shane. This is the tech vlog where we talk about Google, Android, all things tech, plus things that I find interesting. Samsung has done it. They've achieved worldwide domination in selling smartphones, that is. IDC has released their list of top five smartphone manufacturers, well, phone manufacturers in general, and Samsung has finally topped the list for quarter one of 2012. They have successfully unseated Nokia, who has held the top spot for several years, and this has really surprised no one. Nokia has been on a downward slide ever since they passed on Android. So they passed on Android, they passed on Windows, and so now they're stuck trying to develop their own uh, smartphone OS is not working out very well for them. In fact, the very latest phone that they have announced that will be released later this month includes a 41 megapixel camera. Who needs that? Who needs a picture uh, so large that you could paint a mural on the side of a building without losing any quality? I mean, really, all you're doing is using up your data cap for the month whenever you send one or two photos to Facebook. Ridiculous. Uh, other good news, Samsung did manage to outsell Apple as well, and they sold six times Times as many devices as HTC. With the announcement today of the Samsung Galaxy 3, which will release later this month, plus the next Nexus phone, which will release later in the fall, I feel like Samsung has nowhere to go but up. I feel like all they can do is gain even more market share. Speaking of the Samsung Galaxy S3 announcement, I am super excited for this new device. This new device will include a 4.8 inch Super AMOLED screen. Yeah, that's right. It, it will still have a pentile display. You can knock that if you want. I actually kind of like the pentile display, especially when it's 720p or higher resolution because you really cannot see the pixels. I know that people say that the picture on a pixel on a pentile display is washed out, and sometimes I agree on like Motorola phones, it does tend to be washed out. But on a 720p or higher pixel display, you really don't see any of that washed out effect. In fact, it really kind of, it has its benefits. Like when you go outside and you're looking at it in direct sunlight, you can still see your screen fine and dandy. It just, for me, a pentile screen, it's not really a downside for me. So the overseas version will include the quad-core Exynos processor. We probably will not see that quad-core processor in the United States versions of that phone. The main reason being is LTE networks cannot support the quad-core processor yet. So we'll more than likely have the Snapdragon S4 dual core processor, which is really plenty of processor for a next generation device like the Samsung Galaxy S3. It will also have one gigabyte of RAM and a big huge 2100 milliamp battery, which is not like the most incredibly large battery. It's not even as much as like say the Razer Max, but it, it is a sizable battery which it will need to uh, provide power for that 4.8 inch SAMOLED display uh, plus. Models will come in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte and also there will be a stone blue and a marble white version of this device. Samsung is touting this phone as being made for people and inspired by nature. So it includes the Nature UX TouchWiz. The new TouchWiz includes some very interesting features. Some of these features are actually really great. Smart Stay allows the front facing camera to always know when your eyes are either open or closed, it like monitors your eyes. Some people have said that that's creepy, a little big brotherish, as if Samsung can like tap into your front facing camera and watch you at all times. I don't think it's like that at all. I think it's a, just a dumb camera that senses whether or not your eyes are open or shut. Now this would come in handy if you're like reading a book and you set your display to time out after one minute. Obviously if you haven't finished the page in one minute, your screen will time out and that's just, very annoying. So what this would do is allow your screen to always be on as long as you're looking at it. Once you've looked away or your eyes close, the screen would turn off. Another neat feature is S-Beam, which will allow you to share photos, music, and videos between Samsung devices. Hopefully they'll incorporate this into TVs in the future so you can uh, do like a DLNA from your phone directly to your TV. That would be an awesome feature. Pop-up play allows you to have like a picture-in-picture -picture, so if you're watching a video and somebody texts you, you don't have to exit out of the video. In fact, you can keep watching your video and go in there and uh, enable the pop-up play and you can do other functions within your phone like text messaging, emailing, surfing the web, all while you watch your videos, especially like your Droid Moder X YouTube videos. Another cool feature is Buddy Share, which can recognize faces in your pictures and instantly tag those pictures for sharing later on, which is, in my opinion, is pretty cool. If you decide to buy this device, 
like me, you're going to get some extra swag, like 50 gigabytes of Dropbox storage. Hopefully this sends a message like to all other manufacturers to do something sort of like this. I mean, the cloud is the new thing. Everybody is storing their files in the cloud. It'd be awesome if all phones came with cloud storage. In fact, I figure that pretty soon there won't be any SD cards in your phones. You'll just be required to have cloud storage. Hopefully phones in the future will just come with Dropbox storage like this phone. Another item of free swag that'll come is the first version of Flipboard for Android, which is really cool. Flipboard is one of my favorite applications on the iPad, and I'm really excited to see that it's coming to Android, and I'm really happy that I'll have it on my Samsung Galaxy S. As far as release dates, it will release May 29th in Europe. We haven't heard anything as far as the U.S. is concerned. It should release on most carriers. Uh, in June, later in the summer for any of the LTE carriers, probably like Verizon. Either way, we'll have this device in our hands by the end of the year, which makes me very happy. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the DMX Show. Be sure to click on the subscribe button. Click the like button below if you like this. Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments. Are you going to pick up this phone? Are you excited for this phone? Do you feel that this phone has been overhyped? Or are you incredibly pleased with the announcement? Just leave your comments below, guys. Thanks for watching.